We're gonna do the saran wrap method with the watercolor on your big sheet and one of your index cards. You wanna have the saran wrap, and I like to pull out about twice as wide as the sheet that you're gonna be using. So this one's for my index card. And then I'm gonna do one for the big sheet, so it's gonna go a little bit bigger. Okay, and what I wanna do is try to stretch this out so we're gonna be able to use the whole entire thing. I like to pre-scrunch the strain wrap before I even get my water and stuff because we do have to work quickly. The water um, likes to absorb into the paper because we're not using a watercolor paper so it acts a little differently, but if we can get that ready ahead of time, it makes the process a little bit easier. So you kinda have to undo this. Okay, so this was for my bigger paper. What I'm gonna do is I have it out flat and I'm just gonna kind of scrunch it up like this. And get some scrunchy areas in there. I would like it the size, about the size of your paper. It can be a little bigger, that's fine. Make sure you put your name on the back of your paper so you can figure out which one's yours when you're done. Just gonna scrunch this up too. So kind of decide on what colors you want to use. I like to use neighboring colors because they do kind of mix a little bit. So keep that in mind. Color wheels are posted around the room in case you need to figure that out or you could ask your neighbor. Um, I just don't like to use complementary colors because then they mix. So this one I had like pink and purple, maybe a little bit of blues in there. Those work really well. Um, pink and orange, red orange works really well. So I have my colors already wet that I'm going to be using because we did this before. So I have water in the color so they're good and saturated and ready to work with. I'm going to pull this one off and just lay it to the side here for a second. And I'm going to get colors on there. So similar to when we did a wet on wet wash with your other paper. And then we're just going to get some colors on there moving kind of quickly. Let them kind of bloom. And I'm making sure that I'm trying to cover as much of the white as I can. If you have a bigger brush, that makes things go a little bit better too. So I'm going to get this and I'm going to put it on there and I'm going to push down on it. And you can start to see where the colors are concentrating. So I have some good lines going on in here. I might decide to add some more color. So you can pick this up and add more color in places where there's not a lot going on or maybe you want to interject a different color so you get some more variation in there. So I can see that these are going to be really dark and that's good for what we're doing today. Maybe you don't want yours as dark everywhere. Maybe if you were going to write on it, you could do out around a little bit darker. But for this, since we're going to be cutting words out and putting it on there, I do want it to be darker. Okay, that one's looking pretty good. I think I'm going to leave this one the way it is. So I'm going to set it aside, leave the saran wrap on there. We're going to let it sit overnight. I'll tell you how to put that stuff on the drain rack. Then I'm going to do this other one. Same thing. I'm just going to use some different colors here probably. So I'm going to get that wet. Working quickly again.
And I'm checking for white areas or areas that don't have enough color for me. Kind of wiggle that around too. That'll help fill in some of those areas. And that's how you do a three and wrap with watercolor.